In this video, I'm going over seven ways that self-employed 1099 workers can get access to funds if your business has been affected by this pandemic, the coronavirus that we're currently in. A lot of programs coming out and they're focused on small businesses with employees. It can be difficult as a self-employed worker, so maybe you know you have your own business but you don't have employees, maybe you're a 1099 worker, maybe you formed a single member LLC, maybe not, maybe you just work, people just pay you. Maybe you pay contractors, maybe you don't, but you don't have employees. This video is going step by step through seven ways that you can get access to funds if you're unable to work right now because of the pandemic. Again, it can be really hard to go through the different programs yourself, so do share this with other people who are 1099 workers because you really wanna get a head start on some of these items that I'm going over in this video. For those of you who do have employees and for all of the items that I'm covering in this seven step checklist here, I have other videos that go into more detail and you'll be able to access all of them in the description below. I also have a checklist of everything I'm covering in this video so you don't need to worry about writing them all down. You can get access to that too. If we haven't met before, my name's Amanda and you're watching The Business Finance Coach where I simplify all the technicalities of business because I truly believe that the world needs what you have to offer and you should not be held down by these technicalities that are really here to support you in a civilized society. Let's jump in. Number one, economic injury disaster loan and advance program. So this sounds like a loan, but there's actually a way to get a $10,000 grant. Essentially, the government has used this loan because it's already been set up for different disaster um, situations, and there was an advance part of it. So you apply for the loan, you get a $10,000 advance right away because you're in a disaster situation and you need that cash, and now what they've done is said, okay, that's a grant, and a grant means you don't need to pay it back. Loans, you do. Now this is something you qualify for as a self-employed 1099 worker. So you head to the sba.gov and you can see this yellow bar along the top here. You can click learn more and go through the resources and you'll see this, but you can also just click right here and it takes you to start the loan application. Disaster loan assistance, COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan application. Now, this is the application. It's online directly through the SBA. If you do end up just wanting to take a loan through this, it is 3.75% for small businesses and 2.75% interest for nonprofits, which certainly isn't a bad interest rate. But the grant, you do not have to pay back. Number two is called the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP loan. Now, it's called a loan because it's set up like a loan, and you're gonna have to apply for it like a loan, but it's gonna be forgiven as long as it's used for your employees. Now, in your case, as a self-employed 1099 worker, that's not gonna be a hard thing to do, right? Because you're gonna use it to pay yourself. You're gonna to have to follow up and prove that the funds were used for paying yourself and not say for investing or doing something else that isn't necessary. The way you're gonna apply for this loan is going to be through banks. And I recommend reaching out to whoever you have a bank account with right now. Nearly all of the big banks are doing it, but it's just probably going to be faster to do it with a bank that you are already set up with. Now I have the loan application and I go over this in another video. You can start filling this out. It seems to be quite clear that self-employed people are being included in this and you're able to take a loan to replace your wages. This is debated, so you may see people out there saying you can't get this loan, but just because you hear someone can't get it doesn't mean you shouldn't apply because this is all being done so fast. So, you know, there could be a mistake where this is misunderstood. You know, they're barely using the words right for uh, different types of small businesses. 
um, you know, kind of having these two categories that are really the same category. So I copied and pasted into this cheat sheet that I made of these seven ways to get money the specific clauses that really show that this is for self-employed individuals. And that's also the point of what the cheat sheet is saying. Businesses with employees are starting on the 3rd. Businesses without employees are starting on the 10th. Now, you could still try to get started a little early. Now, this loan is supposedly going to be based just on your credit score but I wouldn't let it deter you if your credit score isn't great because you're also, it's a self verification process. Now you certainly don't want to lie. If you don't need this money, you should not be applying for it, but if you need it, you should definitely apply for it. Now, when it comes to the amount you're going to apply for, it's a little complicated, so we won't cover it here, but be sure to check out my other video on calculating average monthly payroll for the PPP. The third way to get access to money when you're self-employed 1099 is to check for state programs and state grants. So you can run a Google search, your state, grants, COVID-19, and try different variations like that. Many states have all sorts of programs. I have a live Google Word doc that will also be linked that has resources by state. If you find that say a program is out of grants, you can post a comment in there and we can use it as a live resource. It's one of the many links below this video in the description. Number four is unemployment. So part of the CARES Act was to extend unemployment to self-employed 1099 workers. So you can apply for unemployment through your state. Now I know if you've been trying, you may be having trouble as many people are, but give the states a little bit of a break and a few days here as they're trying to implement this massive change. Stay on top of your state, you know, try to attempt the website at different times. And all in all, just stay on it. Do be patient with them as it is a huge thing for them to implement. Number five is if you have a retirement plan set up, they have removed the 10% early withdrawal penalty. So that's gone. And then there are two situations. If you're in a severe situation, so you've been severely financially affected because of COVID or someone in your family is sick, then you can withdraw monies and you'll only have to pay income tax on those over three years. And that's just the income tax, no penalty. Now, if you're not severely affected, then you won't qualify for that option, but you will be able to pay the money back over six years, essentially as a loan. Now to initiate something like that, reach out to your investment fund holder. Number six, the stimulus checks. As a self-employed 1099 person, you're also an individual, so you'll get your stimulus check. $1,200 for single people, double that if you're married, as long as your income isn't over the threshold. So if you're over 75,000 single or 150,000 married, there is a phase out range. There's also an amount that will be included based on your dependents. Now I know a lot of people want more information about this and I'll be posting a video as soon as we have it, but at the moment, they don't have the information. This was just passed, it was just given to the IRS. The irs.gov forward slash coronavirus is where you can come. This is what will be updated when they know how exactly they're going to give the checks. Do not call, check back for updates. And they're telling you here, there's no action at this point in time, right? There's nothing that can be done. Lastly, we're at number seven. They've extended paid family leave and sick pay, and they're essentially requiring it for employees and self-employed workers. Now, if you have an ongoing relationship with your client or your employer, even though you're paid as a 1099 worker, if that company has less than 500 employees, they can actually pay you paid family leave and sick pay, just like employees, and they're being completely reimbursed for that through the stimulus and a payroll tax credit that they'll be able to take on their next payroll tax filing. So they don't have to wait till next year. They get that money reimbursed 
when they file their payroll taxes at the end of the quarter. If you or a family member becomes sick and you don't know if you have coronavirus, you're staying home, you're trying to figure that out, maybe you are diagnosed with it or a family member is and you're taking care of them, maybe a child is out of school and you have nowhere for them to go, you need to take care of them. All of those are reasons to get either paid family leave or sick pay. You might just want to talk to your employer if you think they fit into that category. And even if they're bigger, you want to talk to them about it as well. Now the criteria of how all that's working is still kind of unclear. So I wouldn't go up to them demanding it, but I would open lines of communication, especially if it's totally free for the business to be able to provide you that. So that's all for the seven ways to get access to money right now during the coronavirus pandemic. So the last thing we need to talk about is what is the amount of money that you can get from all of these packages? Can you get the $10,000 grant? Can you get a paycheck loan and collect unemployment? Can you do all of these things? Well, yes, but you can only replace the amount of money that you're making on average. Your average net income per month is essentially what you want to replace for the time when it went away. And if you just need help getting to that net income number every month, I give away a free spreadsheet template. You can see it's income and expenses by month. So you need to update your accounting records, your income minus your expenses, per month for all of 2019 up until now. Your pay is based on your average monthly net income as a self-employed person. And then look at any expenses that are continuing in spite of the fact that you're not working or working less. You'll use these records to apply for the different programs. You can essentially replace the net income that you would normally or on average be getting plus any expenses that you can't stop incurring. You cannot double dip. So you can only replace the amount that you're missing with one program or multiple programs, but you should not be replacing your net income more than once through multiple programs. They are pushing this money out fast, but the fines and penalties will be big. So do not take more than the amount you qualify for and need. To recap, number one is the federal disaster loan. That's actually also a $10,000 grant. You wanna get started on that right away. Number two is a Paycheck Protection Program, PPP loan, which will be forgiven. Number three, check for state grants. Four, apply for state unemployment. Five, the retirement plan withdrawal. Fees are removed and you can even take a loan or pay taxes over time on the amount withdrawn. Six, those stimulus checks are coming. And seven, you could talk to your client or ongoing company that you have a relationship with about providing you paid family leave or sick pay. Okay, that's it for the seven ways that you can bring in money right now using the different stimulus pack packages that have taken place because of the coronavirus pandemic. I'd love to hear from you if you have questions about these, but also be sure to jump into the more detailed videos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like so that YouTube knows and do share it with other people who you think could use this information. All of the resources and links I mentioned are in the description below. Like, subscribe, comment, and I'd love to see you in the next video. Bye.